Hello, we're here messing with my lathe again. Well, I'm really not messing with it. I just wanted to show you something that I actually made quite some time ago. A couple people suggested I post this, so I'll show you fellas what I did. I purchased a DRO for this. And of course, as soon as I purchased it, I purchased it for $29 off of Amazon. And it's a Tay, tay tools, I guess is how you say that. It's nothing expensive, but it it's not. It, I like it. It's nice. But as soon as I as soon as I got it, I started thinking, okay, I want to figure out how I'm going to mount this thing. So I got on YouTube and looked, and I found people that was bolting them, bolting them on there. You know, making a block up and bolting it permanent. And I thinking about that, I was like, you know what? When I'm done, I would like to be able to take this and put it back in the box. That it come in and close it up and put it away. Because, I mean, it come with a nice box. So, I, you know, looked around. I seen magnets. And I was like, no. I hate magnets around machinery. Permanent magnets around machinery, I mean, suck. An on-off magnet is, 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 is good. But permanent magnets, no. I mean, perhaps you could use a magnetic base like this. You know, I, I would maybe like that. But sticks up it's so high you know what i mean so after thinking about it for a while i decided to come up with this and if you're looking at that you're thinking hey that looks just like the center section of a caliper and you are correct because this here just simply drops right into there like that and it's ready to roll turn it on Crank it out where you need it, zero it, and if you want to go in 335 thousandths, there you're there. You're done with it, you can simply pull it out and put it back away again. The only modification I had to make to this was not a modification, it was actually a disassembly. I just simply had the, the clamp that's over here, there was one on each end, I just simply removed it. And that was so it could engage up inside of this slot, which is actually a second thought up here. As you crank this out, it goes up in that slot. The reason I added this is because you can see this thing overhangs past the steel. And I got thinking, well, if, even, even with this little bit, this is what I originally had made. I got thinking if you would bump this here, you could rock them set screws. This is just held on there by set screws. I'm getting ahead of, ahead of myself a little bit. It's not bolted. They're just set screws. But getting back to what I was saying, if you you bump this, you could rock that off them set screws. So I added all this to prevent that. But also, the main reason I added it is because whenever I'm working with the tailstock and I go to measure something up here. The first thing I do is throw my arm up here like this. Well, the first time I went to use this, I did that and about dropped about throw these down on the floor because it was sick, you know, it was out like that. And of course, if you hit that like that, things start to happen. So I actually added, actually added this and this later. This and this here is just it's all press fit. Well, this is bolted, but this piece here is just a press fit to fit under there. And once once it's together, it's it's pretty good. The only thing maybe I could have did better was maybe made this so it was actually recessed down in. So if you drop something on it, it would have to be this way. In order to do damage, if you drop something this way, it couldn't get to it. That'd probably be the only thing I could I could think of that I could did better with this this design. Now I have come up with something even more better, so I may make that in the future. But for now, this is what I've come up with for this. So, anyways, I'll give you fellows a little look at what I did here. And this, this looks a lot worse than what it is. It, it really wasn't that bad to make this. I just simply started out with a rectangle. And then, I think I used, yeah, I used a half inch. Half inch in mill to mill this. Mill, mill this out. And then I come in with a 9 32 in mill and 
did all the corners, did this with the 9 30 seconds, and then this here, I put the half inch back in and just simply come down with the mill and moved over, and then that made all my clearances. Like I said, every DR is going to be different, but basic idea should still work. Now, as far as mounting the tailstock, I'd mentioned that they're just set screws. They're just simply squeezing on this nub. Now, most likely, unless you got a 14-inch rock well, you're not going to have a nub. Your tailstock's going to be flat on top. It could be round. Who knows? So basically, from here up, you could pretty much copy it verbatim. But there down, you're going to have to figure out how to mount this to the tailstock. Now I could have, which I thought about doing, is I could have drilled a couple holes in here and then used some flat some flat screws, flat head screws, and actually physically bolted this down to the tailstock. But since this nub was up here, I thought, hey, I'll just, you know, that I'll just use that, and that's what I come up with. Which turns out it actually, in my case, was more better. Because I was able, once I got this on here I slid it back and forth to get it on center and then by tightening this set screw and loosening the opposite corner set screw I'm able to tram this thing this way and the same thing tighten this loosen this I can tram it this way so I was able to do that and get it so that scale is perfectly parallel with the travel of the quill so you don't have any creeping off because if this thing isn't it creeps off as you crank it out then it's going to put it on a bind and end up busting something. Now for a 14 inch, this, this is a six inch scale. This thing actually worked out perfect because if you, you see here, I'll crank it out and you don't have to worry about busting nothing. You can just blindly crank it until it stops. I've actually over cranked this clear out, but you can see it won't it won't crank out far enough to tear it apart. I have to grab this and pull it out. So there's no no chance of accidentally busting this. So anyways, that's what I come up with. And uh, the reason I post these videos is when I I figure out how to do something or make something and haven't seen it before, haven't seen anybody post anything about it, then I like to try to post something about it because I went through a lot of a lot of stuff I'm going to be posting to be stuff I kind of pulled hairs trying to figure out. So this is why why I make my videos. So anyways, that's that. My next video will be uh, the bearing removal, spindle bearing removal in the headstock of this. Because I can't find anything about it. I don't even know what type of bearing I need. I know what the book calls for, but the book's 1967, and I can't figure out how to cross-reference it. So I have to physically pull the bearing out to figure out what it is. So anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, like I said, I hope this helps somebody with their project. My, I always have a kind of my motto, I guess you could say, is somebody could uh, design something kind of neat. Anybody can come and take that design and make it better. So maybe somebody will make it more better. Thanks for watching and have a good day or night.